What's up guys, my name is Asia, I am The Basic Christian, and today we're asking the question, can high-earning women submit? If you're a high-earning woman, this is for you. Let's hop into scripture. I wanna show you something about yourself. Luke 8, one through three says, Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the 12 were with him and certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. Jesus walked with women who provided for his ministry, and it says that they provided from his substance. The Greek for substance is property, possessions, goods, and wealth. Now remember, there were a bunch of people who were denied walking with Jesus, just like that legion guy that came out of the cave, and he said, we are legion, we're many. Jesus cast those demons out and then he said, hey, can I go with you, Lord? And Jesus said, no, go home and give them your testimony. Tell of what I've done for you. But the scripture says that these women walked with him and many are called, but few are chosen. These women were chosen. These were high earning women of substance who were chosen. So if you're a high earning woman, you are a double threat once you come to faith in Christ because he gives us power and authority in the spirit. We can pull down principalities. We can pull down strongholds. We can lift depression and spirits off of people. A addiction. We can take all of that off of people in the power of Christ, but you're now an earthly threat as well because the gift that God put in you allows you to create resources to build his kingdom on earth. You can do the will of the Lord and the devil hates you for it. So that means you probably suffered a lot of attacks in your life. Verse 8 2a says they had to be healed of demonic spirits and infirmities. These were women who were high earning women with gifting to produce resources in this earth and they had to be delivered from demonic spirits and they had to be healed of sicknesses, illnesses, and disease. So back then in biblical times, it wasn't natural for women to have those type of resources on their own. Normally they had to get it from the husband and they weren't able to just build it because they weren't given the authority in society to do so. These women that walked with Jesus, these were women who had been through things. These are women who had been delivered from things. These are women who came to know the power of Christ because the life that they lived. And speaking of the life that they lived, let's look at a few reasons why high earning women become high earning women. Now remember, this list does not apply to everyone. So please do not apply to everyone that you know. And don't take it personally if it's not for you. Just let it fly. So the first thing on the list is you understood at a very young age that no one is coming to save you. And the people that were responsible for you, depending on them, their, your safety, your well-being, the care for your spirit, the care for your body, the care for your soul, weren't available the way they needed to be. So the Manosphere likes to say that high earning women become the men that they want. And it's not just about being the man that you want, you became the man that you needed. Now, I don't mean this in a way that changes your identity or any nonsense like that. What I'm saying is that no one was there to protect you, so you had to protect you. No one was there to provide for you, so you had to provide for you. The people that should have cared for you neglected you, so you had to care for yourself. You knew very early that no one was coming to save you. Number two is the people who raised you didn't respect your calling. Now, that it's not just mom and dad, that's auntie, uncle, foster care system. Whoever raised you, they didn't respect the call on your life. And in not respecting the call and the gifting that God put on your life, what they did was exact their will on your life instead of allowing God's will. And that could easily push you into the wrong direction. It can push you into a career field that you're not supposed to be in. It could push you into positions that you're not supposed to be in. And it can put you in very difficult situations that aren't easy to get out of. Number three, parents live vicariously through their children. So parents have lived their lives. They're not done living. God always wants to use them. But a lot of people think that once they have kids, that their chance to keep growing and moving and working with God and God working through them is almost impossible. And then once you start getting up in age, people believe that God can't use them just because they're older, which is a complete lie from the devil. And so these parents have their kids and they raise their kids in a manner that allows them to achieve what they missed through their children. This is why when you see kids getting drafted into college and they don't choose the college that their parents want them to choose, choose, it's because they're living vicariously through them. So you're dashing my dream. If you don't become a Gator and play football in Florida, you're dashing my dream. If you don't go to Grambling and get on the marching band there and you don't perform there, you're dashing my dream. You can't choose anything else because my success can only be seen through you. And so parents end up pushing their daughters into positions that are not for them. 
If I have an artist that's a daughter, I don't want her to be a doctor. I want her to be an artist. If I have a daughter that can argue like no one's tomorrow and make her case, I want her to be the lawyer that God created her to be and not to be the writer that I wanted to be. And this is why it's important to see your kids gifting and train them up in the way that they should go, just like the Bible says. You take your gifts and you use them for God, but a lot of parents don't understand that. And again, especially once they get up in age, they think that they can't accomplish and do anything more with their lives so they try to do it through their kids and this is where the high earning women come from now you aren't responsible for what happened to you as a child but you are responsible for healing from it you have to seek jesus so he can heal you so he can get into all those broken places all the mismanaged places that people who were responsible for you failed at and you have to let him in there so he can bind you up and heal you and just like the women who walk with jesus he wants to deliver us from being neglected and rejected and used and manipulated he doesn't want us to feel that pain anymore and jesus doesn't just want to use you the way the world uses you he wants to make you whole he wants to make you complete he wants you to know that you're loved and given all that you've been through to become the caliber of woman that you are, you have to know that it's imperative to constantly sit at the feet of Jesus. And we have to realize that some of our success comes from an unhealed place. Just like if you were a kid and you were made fun of for having Payless shoes. Now you're an adult and you're growing up and saying, I will never wear anything but some red bottoms because ain't nobody catching me slipping again. And now you're spending thousands of dollars on red bottoms and having to support this entire lifestyle that you've built all because you're living from an unhealed place and making decisions from there. But as a high earning woman, you have to know that you're gifted that you're a double threat, that you're worthy of love, that there's a man out in this world that God has ordained for you that will find you easy to love. No matter what the world says, no matter what those podcasts say, you are easy to love. Are any of us perfect? No, of course not. We all have work to do, but for the right person, you are easy to love. Jesus found you easy to love. It was an easy decision. You were worth carrying the cross. You were worth being hung on the cross. You were worth going into the tomb. You were worth the lashes on his back. You were worth the thorns in his head. You were all worth it. You were worth it. He made the decision to die because of you, because you were easy to love. And if Jesus put marriage on your heart, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. And as you seek God, he's gonna teach you that you can feel safe with him, that you're in good hands, that he'll always guide you, he'll always protect you, he'll always lead you, he will always fight for you. And you can trust him to bring your husband to you. And you can rest because he's in control and his love abounds. And that's the problem with our view of God. We don't have a revelation of how much he actually loves us. So we think that he's good, but we think that he's good to everybody else and not just to us. We know that he'll do it, but we think he'll do it for somebody else and not for us. And the problem is that when you select a man, you might have a problem submitting because you're selecting a man in your own will, in your own power, and you don't feel safe. As a woman who has a high performance, as a woman who has high earning, as a woman who has resources and substance, you're capable of submitting. God will give you the desire to submit, but you have to feel safe. And as a woman who wants to feel safe, you have to learn how to let God lead. And as you let God lead, he's going to bring you a husband who you can submit to, a husband who will submit to you, and one that you know is fully submitted to God. And once you have a revelation of God's love, how much he loves and cares for you, and wants to provide for you, wants to see you flourish, wants to see you grow, once you get that revelation and he's finally provided your God-ordained spouse, you will rest knowing that that man has your best interest at heart. You will feel safe. But none of this works if you don't put Jesus first. Again, my name is Asia. I am The Basic Christian. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, and don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know how you like this video. I really appreciate you guys. See you in the next one.